Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of Jenny's Way with Will Abels. Here we go. Hi, I want to bring a Will Abels back to you guys, listeners of Jenny's Way. He is awesome comedian coming from Nashville. So we were talking about attention. Who doesn't? Why do you think I, I'm doing podcasts? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so here's a little story. Um, my mother, uh, I grew up in Ukraine. So my mother was classically trained musician. But um, wow. she liked to be on stage and perform. Uh, and I always had that a bit of a stage fright. I can't, I can't okay. explain that. But every time, it's like my, my hands have, you can just uh, see uh, those little things on my hands. And I, and I felt it. So after a while, I think it finally went away. But I always had a bit of a stage fright. But being in, on camera, I love. So it's kind of a, a, a I think I would call yeah. it adrenaline rush. I, I love it. And I, I feel yeah. the exchange of, once I feel the extent of the exchange of the energy with the audience, it's so much different. Being in, in front of the camera is one thing, but doing live performances, you just, I, you can't compare it. it. It's just awesome. So yeah, right back yeah. at you, attention, I love it. So my mother and I uh, wrote and produced two, two ladies musical show and we performed it for a while, uh, just mostly, no, mostly locally. And we won in North Carolina. We want to take it further, but uh, it's a sad story than she, she passed on an early age and I don't want to get sad, but oh, yeah, I'm sorry. but I feel like uh, being in front of the camera and um, bringing, uh, bringing my voice and voice of people like you, it's kind of passing on her voice uh, in the sense that I want to highlight certain people and people ask me, how do yeah. you know who to bring? And I say, I feel their energy. I feel like I want to highlight them. Mm -hmm. I want people to see their talents. I want people to get to know them better. And that's kind of one of the biggest, one of my biggest motivations for the podcast. That's not the only one. The other one is I yeah. want people to know that every one of us have unique talent. And if you haven't explored yeah. it, like you, it sounds like you explored it in your younger years. So it's easier for you in that sense. For other people that maybe weren't following, um their unique passions and talents it's harder to do it in their adult uh adulthood so it may take a little bit more effort how would you recommend they will start exploring if they never had an opportunity as younger adults yeah i mean so that's that's fun because um we have a few comics in town right now that they're only six months in but they started as adults and they're much some of them are much older than me, even. Um, You're not that old. And Come again, on now. They, I mean, I'm 35. I'm not that young either. Hey, it's all uh, relative but, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, but yeah, so they, they, you know, they go, they try it out at the open mics, and they try and find uh, a balance between their work and their home life. And um, I, I will say, a lot of them don't have kids, so that makes it easier. Or they have like grown up kids, so they don't have to worry about that. Um, so that can probably be a bit of the problem like if you have now you have if you have a good like uh support system and a partner that you know be like hey so tuesday and thursday i go do the open mics and you have to watch the kids like that's great now we have a lot of people like that as well um but again yeah they just tried out the open mics a lot of people also take a uh, comedy class they'll take a i know you told me you, you took an you're taking an improv class and very similar to that where they they go uh, to one of the local comedy clubs, they find the class, they pay for it, they take it for six to eight weeks or whatever it is, and they learn the basics, and then they uh, eventually start learning how to explore that on stage. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, comedy improvisation is different from what you're doing in the sense it's more of a group effort, yeah. and you have to be yeah, open yeah. and willing to take a lead from other per a person and kind of work in collaboration. Yeah. So it's same yet different at the same time. What is your take on those two things? Yeah, I, so I, I you know, um, improv's great. It's a lot of fun. Sketch very is very fun Very much as well, fun. But, oh, my God. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I love, yeah, I don't do a lot of it, but when I do get asked to be in a sketch or something, it's always a great time. Uh, but, I mean, there is a, 
you know, I, I think the big difference is there is a lot of collaboration in stand up. We help each other write and all that. But at the end of the day, it's just you up there by yourself. Uh, and so you have to take the lead. You have to be in charge of the audience. You have to command uh, the room. And then with improv, uh, you get to rely on other people. So if you're starting to flounder, they can just yes and or they can sweep it clean or whatever it is. Uh, but I also think there's a lot of value in comedian or stand ups taking an improv class uh, because it does help with um, crowd work in a positive way of being able to like handle it and not get too unfocused and try and work with them to get back on track mm -hmm. a little bit or maybe mine out a new joke and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Because I, I took an improv class once in New York and I really enjoyed it, but it just overall wasn't for me because I like I, I was already doing stand up. So I just liked stand up enough that I wasn't going to join an improv troupe and all that. OK. Coming yeah. from Comedy Improve, uh, I got you a present. It's under your t uh, it's under your chair. The the thing that the you thing that you always wanted. Can you look under your chair and see what I brought you? It's something really yeah, good. I've been stalking you, knowing what you want. What what's under your chair? <laughs> can you tell me? Is it a hundred? It's a hundred million dollars. Oh, you know I had that for you. <laughs> <laughs> what you do oh, with it? What, what you do with it? What are you oh. going to do with it? I'm quitting comedy. <laughs> I thought you loved every second of it. <laughs> yeah, but I'd love $100 million more, I think. <laughs> okay, what would... Let's see, what would I what would I do with $100 million? Um, I would probably buy a house. I'd probably buy a house. Where at? Uh, or a cabin. Maybe I'll buy a cabin in the woods uh, somewhere in Tennessee. I think that's probably what nice. I would do. Yeah. What would you do with $100 million? Uh... Buy a house on the beach. Uh, open. Oh yeah, I'll go to the open, beach. Open uh, one house at the beach, one house in the mountain, and I will open a nonprofit that my mother and I wanted to do for uh, uh, for kids that wanted to have uh, musical talents, but but their kids couldn't afford the lessons. That's something that oh, that's that'd be something so nice. that we yeah. wanted to do, and she passed on right uh, right before that. After we kind of already started getting everything ready before the first gala. That's what I would do. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully it's something yeah, you still do. I hope so too. And we'll get all the, yeah. all the creatives together. And we'll start it. I, that's, yeah, that's perfect. something, that's something is still in the back of my mind that I will get back to. So now, you know, so mm. that's the rest of the listeners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, how do you keep yourself grounded? Cause he, life can get stressful, not to say just for co comedians, but any one of us. Well, that's actually something I've been working on more seriously the last year and a half. Um, Cause I wasn't very good about that. Why uh, do you think all. you weren't good and, about it? Uh, was it not your focus for some reason? I think it's a little bit of focus. Uh, the pandemic didn't help. Uh, the last two years in New York were pretty hectic. Um, like I went through a pretty big breakup and I didn't really like I was taking care of myself, but I wasn't taking care of my mental health mm -hmm. really. Uh, and then that just kind of snowballed over the last couple of years. And then the pandemic didn't help. Probably. Um, it didn't help anybody. And then I got to no, it didn't help anybody. Of course. Uh, so, you know, it was one of those things where I kept sort of taking care of my mental health, but not really doing what I like trying to do it myself instead of doing it with the help of a therapist. Uh, so I found that, well, one, one I, so this is something I've learned in the last six months. Um, like I love being a therapy and I love my therapist and I love the conversations we have and what we unpack and all that. But I also learned that I have used comedy as a form of therapy for uh -huh. a long time uh, because I, like I said, I got into a car accident and I've turned it into a joke. Um, and so what, so I was doing that for my whole career and it wasn't until I was in therapy that I realized like, oh, I can still do that. But then I can also analyze what's happening like uh, emotionally and mentally after that accident with my therapist so that I am comfortable to talk about it on stage. And it doesn't become something that is a hang up. And, you know, and, and so that that helps a lot. Um, exercising. I do. A lot, I exercise as much as I can. Well, <laughs> I usually do. I've been a little lazy lately, but uh, I find exercise. Wait, no, helps. lazy? And... Who are you? Oh, no. <laughs> What's lazy for Will? Do you exercise once a week? Uh, I try and exercise three or four times weights? a week, but I lift weights. I go to hot yoga. I go on long walks. I used to run. I don't do that anymore because I'm just my knees aren't great. Uh, I box sometimes. 
Uh, sometimes I ride my bike. I do ride my bike sometimes. Uh, but yeah, just trying to do something. Um, my my opener and I were talking about this on the way back that we're going to try and go hike on Saturday instead of like we, we tend to like go and check out breweries or restaurants and stuff. And we were like, why don't we start hiking instead of just spending the money we're making? That's uh, an awesome idea. So I, yeah, I love I hiking. Do... There's so many greenways around here where I live in North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, same, same here. And we're learning that every city has, or every spot we go to has like something you can get to fairly easily. Do um, you do meditation, of, visualization, oh, affirmation, any of that? Uh, so I'll meditate sometimes. I'm not great at it, and uh, the problem, and that's the problem is I'm not consistent, so uh, I don't do it as much. But I, that's something I'm going to try and get into. Uh, I do some breathing exercises and ice baths, but since it's been so cold this winter, I haven't been doing too many ice baths. And uh, also, I just, I've been working on a lot of reframing the way I look at my career in comedy because um, I was feeling a little bit mm. stuck. Uh, and one of that was because I didn't have a car. Well, now that I have a car again, that's helped um, open up my calendar a little bit more because before I was reliant on other people and now I don't have to be as much. reframing. You know what I was going to ask you? What's next for Wheel? And you talking about reframing. So what are you working on now? Yeah. Well, I'm what I'm trying to... I'm trying to remember every little thing that's a victory because it's a very long road. Uh, and the, the road that I'm taking is a very long, uh, I'm taking the long way for a reason because I think it's making me a better comedian. So I'm trying to uh, enjoy the victories instead of worrying about or comparing it to someone else's victory or, or anything like that. Uh, so up next, uh, I've got a lot of road dates um, going around Indiana and Ohio for the rest of the month. Little and victories. March let's, gets busy let's, again. Let's, Let's focus on that. What do you think makes it so exciting about little victories? People forget and they stop. Don't they don't stop to celebrate little victories? Why do you think it's so important for people to do it? I think sometimes it reminds you of the growth you've made in your career and as a person. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, I, I had a headlining show on Saturday that it wasn't great, but it was something I wouldn't have been able to do a few years ago. So. I tried to remind myself that, like, you know, that is something that was a goal and mm. you're doing it, you know, and... Uh, How does that make you so, feel? I mean, I mean, sometimes, it, I think the hardest thing with comedy is equating your self-worth to a dollar sign mm. uh, because comedy doesn't mm. pay well. So it's frustrating being very good at something and not seeing the money come in. But at the same time, I don't do it for the money. It's just, it's a job, so I need to make money. Uh, so that's, that's something I've also been working on is trying to not focus so much on like, oh, I only made this much money. I'm only worth that much money. And it's like, no, no, you're, you're, you're worth so much more than that. I think that's important to know for a lot of comedians, especially the one that's starting up. It's not, it's, it doesn't yeah. sound like it's easy to be making money, even if you're good. Yeah. And I would suggest, uh, don't quit your day job right away. Uh, <laughs> uh, cause you are not going to make money for a long time. Um, I mean, unless you like blow up on Instagram or something crazy happens, but for the most part, uh, if you want to take the long road and, and make the steps of becoming a good comedian, it's going to be a while until you really start making some, some serious money. So you want to do a big tour, you were saying, correct? Is that the big plan? Yeah. Yeah, so this this year we're staying on the road as much as I can. Um, I don't know what that means at the back end. I mean, I've, I'm always thinking about what's the next project. Uh, so my my new my podcast comes back. Uh, I was going to ask you, you're so relaunching, okay? Yeah, we're relaunching. So we're recording tomorrow. We were supposed to record last week, but unfortunately, my friend had uh, something come up. So we're recording tomorrow. Probably get that out by next week, and we'll be back on season three. I think it's season four of the podcast, but season three that mm -hmm. I've been on. Um, and then, uh, we got that coming, lots of road dates. Uh, and then basically, you know, I want to, I'll get to the summer, see what new material I have and then kind of outline, all right, when's the next special taping or maybe do something shorter, like do a 10 minute taping or a 20 minute taping. Uh, and I've, I'm reaching out to a lot of different, uh, bookers for specific tapings and I will hear back about those soon. And I don't know. Uh, that's just kind of up in the air. Uh, so if those work out, this could be a very good year. And if they don't work out, it can still be a great year. So we'll, we'll, we'll make see. it great no matter what. That's that's the that's the mindset yeah. that we all need to have. What's the success for you? What's your definition of success? 
Uh, let's see. I mean, I already am pretty successful. I've accomplished a lot in a very short amount of time. And outside of comedy, I used to work in TV production and I've worked on some pretty I'm incredible shows. I'm glad you brought it up. I was going to ask you. Well, tell tell yeah. uh, listeners what shows did you work on? Some exciting stuff. I worked on, yeah, I worked on the, uh, the Academy Awards two times and then the Emmys, um, the Sound of Music Live, Feeder Fan Live, The Wiz. Uh, I worked on Macbeth, which was a play back in New York. Uh, worked on a couple of reality That's shows. So cool. and... I think a lot of people don't know yeah, that. Yeah, it was great. You've done some interesting stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was a really cool time, um, but ultimately it led me back to wanting to do stand-up more seriously. Uh, and luckily they provided me with a lot of stories and a lot of friends that uh, you know I, I'm still close to. And the only the only production I still work on is Miss Universe, uh, which is just random. Um, but yeah, no, it's so again, like I feel like that I am successful. It's just I want to keep pushing uh, further and further because I'd like to be, uh, you know, regularly on TV. I'd like to get um, a special that's a little bit more recognized, and I would like to do start doing not like not like necessarily bigger shows on the road, but headline more consistently and work with more clubs. Like I don't, I'm not in with a lot of clubs and that's really what you need to do to, uh, cause I still have to like drive for Uber eats and dog sit and edit videos for other comics and all these other things that I, you know, they're great. I don't mind them, but I have to do them to support comedy because comedy isn't paying all the bills at the moment. So I would like to work more consistently with the clubs because that would be a way to get in and start mm, doing that. So more what's regularly. stopping you? Uh, a little bit followers. Um, but that's also another thing I'm working on this year is a lot of friends of mine are at a point where they're starting to headline. So we're starting to collaborate and I'm coming out to nice. open for them. That's so nice. it's like, yeah, so it's, it's not a step backwards by any means, but it's just a step to the side. So I still do my headlining gigs when I have them. But for the most part, I'm focusing on getting with the clubs by using like, not by using my friends, but by working with my friends to go yeah. do that. So that's, that's kind of like, yeah. So that was part of the reframing is like, okay, how do I do this? And then it's like, oh yeah, I have friends that do this with me. So let's just all do it that's together. Cool. You know, it's like podcasting, like, uh, uh, you know, people going at each other podcasts. It's the same way. It's collaborative effort. Yeah. yeah. Helping each other out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. To, to get a yeah, message out there. One of, the, one of the things that's too important to me, like you have a message, like your message is, is important. So I, I, every one of us has a story and have a message. So we just have to help each other out to get it out there. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's that, uh, keeping you excited when you wake up in the morning? What's the driving force for you to do more, to reach more and don't quit the comedy, so to speak? Um, well, I mean, again, like I really love doing it still. So if I have a show that night, that's something I get to look forward to. Uh, the guy I tour with Brandon Gerald is, he's a very fun dude. Um, so he, and he, we work together very well. We bounce jokes off oh, each other. Right. We, we have a couple, yeah, we have a couple projects we want to work on and we both like are good about trying to motivate the other one to get the project done and all that kind of stuff. Is he the um, one that you're starting, uh, your podcast with, uh, the season four? Season four is no, that's with my friend Drew Harrison. Uh, Brandon and I might start our own podcast as well, though, so we would have two podcasts. And then, um, Brandon was the one who actually ran the show that we, oh, yeah, met yeah, at. yeah, yeah. I forgot, I am not good with yeah. names. I'll be the first one to tell you when no, I see the okay. faces. I, oh, yeah, I know you to tell your name. Mm-mm, I'll know your name, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so the people I interview, I know their names. If I didn't, sorry, guys. I may not remember your name. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You only met him once. Yeah, uh, say hello. But... He, that, that was good. I'm glad he was able to do that. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, that. Um, and he's good. And he's doing it again. And I'm going to be on it this oh, time. So. Okay, awesome. Well, when we in Nashville, I will definitely let you know. When you're in North Carolina, you tell me. So we... Yeah, I should be in North Carolina next month. I should be there the 15th and 16th, and then we're coming back April 5th and 6th, okay, I believe. Okay, so all my yeah. local listeners will be here March 15th through 17th, you said? Uh, March 15th 16th. and 16th. Okay, I, awesome. Yes, yeah. Well, I'll yeah. let all, all my network know. We'll come out. We'll hear you 
That would yeah, be, be fun. fun. I, I can't wait to hear you because <laughs> I didn't get to listen to yeah. you that time. You were just there helping no, out. No, no, I didn't. I just, yeah, I was just helping out Brandon, helping him set up the equipment a little bit and all that. But yeah, no, it was fun. I'm happy that I get to finally do it. Uh, yeah, mm. it'll be good. So what would you say for people, the most important thing to achieve your goals? If you have to say the top two or three things, if like you dead said, you know, you want to do first is decide what you want to do. That's obviously. Yeah. Uh, I think one, because I've been doing this myself. Uh, I think not being set in your ways. Like if you want to do it one certain way, that's fine. But if you're finding that it's not working, it's okay to try something else. Uh, like that's kind of what I was talking about is like just pushing through and doing all this on my own. Now that I'm working with more people, it's becoming easier. Uh, and that was something I wish I could have done last year, maybe the year mm. before. Um, so that's always important. It's just like being a little bit flexible and not uh, being too stubborn about doing it only your way. You know, there's other ways to, what's, I don't know, what's, it's, yeah, there's other ways to do some, everything. There's more, um, more than one way to do everything. There's, there's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another thing I would say is, uh, you know, give yourself um, time to rest. Um, so because important. that's something I've, yeah. And I was, I've been, I was always very bad at that. And as again, something that in the last six months I'm getting Me better too. at. Yeah. I'm so bad. I'm always yeah. like, I yeah. gotta do more. I gotta do more. Well, you have to slow down sometimes and be with yourself and take a break and kind of rejuvenate so you can have energy to do more. Right. Like, uh, I very, like specifically, I kind of make Tuesday my, like, I call them my mental health days. Good. Um, Cause I like try and do hot yoga. Usually I have therapy on a, a Tuesday. If not, it's like usually every other week, but I'll like, or I'll make, make sure that's a day I go for a walk or definitely go to the gym and try to just not do anything comedy related. And of course things pop up. Sometimes you have to answer emails and all that. Uh, but, but for the most part, I find taking rest uh, helps a lot to achieve your goals um, efficiently and uh, keeping a, a schedule as consistent as mm. you can, but also leaving room for flexibility. Um, I find that very, like, usually I make Wednesday, my booking days where I reach out to bookers and try and fill my calendar. And I usually take Monday off and, uh, I try and do, try and edit a video on Thursday and post every Thursday or Friday or both. Structure to, um, your, to and your day I, and your week. So, you know, like Monday yeah. is my day to do this. Tuesday is my day to relax, rejuvenate. Wednesday is my booking day right. and so forth. So you won't be waking right. up in and the morning wondering, what am I supposed to do today? And the whole day is wasted. Yeah. And, and, uh, again, also I think keeping it flexible helps like, um, you know, normally I would take today off, but I had to get errands done. We just drove back from the road. So that and was here part you of are it. speaking uh, with me. Thank you. With. And we got the podcast. Yeah. So, you know, I'm moving the week and we're also traveling again on Thursday. So I had to move the week around a bit where it's like, all right, where are you Friday all going now, Thursday? Friday during the day. Thursday we'll be in oh, Columbus, wow, nice. Ohio. Yeah, and then Friday, Saturday we're back in Dayton. We're back mm. in Dayton, Ohio. Lots of yeah. traveling, meeting a lot of people. Yeah, Wait, yeah, maybe and it's making fun a lot because of money with some money. <laughs> make it some money. Make it some money. Yeah, yeah. You know, make it some money and breaking Guinness world records. Yeah, break know. some of those <laughs> records, and I will say, Will is on Jenny's way breaking records. Okay, we'll bring you back, and you'll talk about <laughs> how you broke the biggest record in the comedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well hopefully. <laughs> well, you, you never know. The people say you kind of have to rehearse it in your mind. I've heard the other day uh, envisioning, like you rehearse it before it yeah. happened, and it's so so powerful. Like even, yeah. but you don't envision per se the very end result. You envision the steps you have to take, even the steps that you don't want to take, but you have to take those steps to get where you want to be. Yeah. Envisioning the, uh, the journey, essentially. The journey. The journey is uh, awesome. And we just have to love the journey. It's not the destination. It's truly the journey. And in the last couple yeah. of years, I realized that even most of the journey is where it's at and doing every moment. And with that said, I so love to have that conversation with you. I'm so happy that you taking time out of your crazy busy schedule sounds like, especially this week, and come to Jenny's way. Uh, in conclusion, what would yeah. you like to say? 
Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. It was so nice talking to you. And this was fun uh, analyzing comedy in this way because <laughs> most comics don't always do it. Um, but you can follow me on sure. Instagram at Will Abel's Comedy. And I'd love for you to come see a show. Um, I Most of my dates I post on awesome. my Instagram. Uh, I, need, I need to update my calendar a little bit no, better. That's okay. You'll do it. But yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have um, you, but yeah, we'll you know. have your links. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, get all my links up. Um, and yeah, come see a show and, uh, you know, just uh, give yourself a little grace, you know, especially when things get tough. Keep going. It's, it's okay. Because the next, yeah, you got the next day to yeah. try it again. Things so, get tough. Keep on going. You heard it from Will. And he is going to come back to the, to the show next time and tell us how he broke that record. And I appreciate <laughs> your time being on Janus Way. Thank you so much. I Lovely to be in it's such an amazing conversation. Yeah, thank you so much. This was great. Well, as they say, alrighty then. A great impression on me from this interview is Will's observation that writing jokes often involves drawing from personal experiences and finding humor in everyday situations and that we all need to explore and pursue our unique talents and passions with dedication and consistent practice for progress on the road to success. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps the channel grow. Until next time, see you!